Oh my gosh, we're live. We are here. We are doing it. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, it's hilarious uh, what things get me stressed out these days, and this is one of them. So thanks for being here and watching me, your host, Silas, stress out a little bit. <laughs> um, we're going to let a couple more feeks trickle in here. Um, while we're hanging out, if you could uh, drop in the comments uh, where you're from. Love to hear where we're showing up from today. Let me know what your favorite type of climbing is and uh, where you hopefully were climbing today, or at least where you were climbing last would be awesome to see. Uh, also, it'd be great to hear who's a guide out there, if any guides are on the call. Um, let's see, we'll have a little, little lag time here, of course. Lots of familiar faces in the chat. So nice of you all to be here. Thank you. Good to see you all. Quebec, Canada, oh man, amazing. Must be like full on spring up there, fully transitional right now. It was gorgeous in the gunks today. I was not out climbing, unfortunately. I was working really hard on trying to prepare well for this. So um, you're gonna get what you're gonna get today. <laughs> Chapel Pond, or Chapel Hill, nice, North Carolina, perfect. Australia, wow, welcome, so honored to have you. Neil's here, he's climbing New Jersey, amazing. Truckee, wow, people from all over. I'm so honored and humbled to um, have you all tuning in today. Fantastic. Lots of new names. Perfect. Keep them coming. Park City, Vegas. Oh, man, it must be perfect in Vegas right now. Fantastic. Greenfield, Mass. Nice, Chris. That looks really fun. Brooklyn, New York. Nice. And the gunks last weekend. Yep. Wow, some European climbing too. Germany. Just back from Sicily. Fantastic. Courtney, New Hampshire. Perfect. Brazil. Wow. How lucky a guy am I to have all of you tuning in to hear what this guy's got to say. <laughs> Thank you all. Um, I'm honored, really. Um, well, I'm, I'm mostly here today because mentorship has been an enormous part of my career in both climbing and guiding. And I'm really uh, so excited to share with you some ways that I've been hopefully able to mentor others in this whole climbing guiding thing. And uh, I know some of you on the call are guides, some are recreational climbers, uh, some are both obviously. Um, so I'm, you know, a big part of, of me today in this world of climbing is really kind of passing on what I've learned in 25 years of doing this. So I hope you are able to glean a little bit of um, wisdom or knowledge from today's call. I'm going to introduce something I've been working on for well over a year and a half. Um, I mean, really my whole career, but really intensely the last year and a half called the Year Map Framework, which is an acronym. It's just for kicks. Um, it's called the Universal Rubric for Mountain Adventure Progression, which is a bit of a mouthful, but I really like the way Year Map um, kind of rolls off the tongue because um, it's your map to climbing the next steps in your career. So I hope that's um, useful for you and kind of fun. Stick around until the end of this call, if you're able to, and I'll be sharing a freebie uh, with you involving some your map framework sort of stuff. So um, yeah, I'm super excited about that. I'm also gonna share some opportunity to collaborate with me more closely, um, right from the comfort of your home, wherever you are around the world, and uh, work on some mentoring in that way as well. So. This session is going to be uh, officially one hour, although I'm happy to hang around a bit longer and answer any questions that people might have if you're still on and engaged. So thanks again for being here. I'm truly honored. Um, I hope this session's engaging and informative. And at the very least, um, maybe we'll get a laugh out of it. And we're going to have a great time. All right. So without uh, much further ado, you know, it's always so funny on these things because I'm not hearing or getting much feedback from you. I'm just talking to my camera, which is like the craziest thing ever. I feel like um, with all this webinar sort of stuff, I used to be able to do it in the field really well. And then moving into um, the Zoom world where people are talking, but not that much was one step. And now this is a whole nother step where I'm here literally just talking to my computer. So um, we're going to keep going, see how it goes. And I'm super excited to have you here. Thank you. Um, let's jump in the first slide. So I've been doing this climbing thing for quite a while now. I'm a full-time mountain guide running my own guide service called Alpine Logic, which I started in 2007. Uh, I'm an internationally licensed uh, AMGA, IFMG mountain guide. I finished up that training about 13 years ago. And upon receiving uh, my pin in 2011, I've started teaching formally for the AMGA 
which is the American Mountain Guide Association. And I do uh, guide training courses and exams for them uh, in rock, alpine, and um, uh, the ice disciplines all over North America. I've been doing that for, I guess, boy, quite a while now. Um, I've also served uh, eight years on the board of directors for the AMGA, and I'm currently uh, acting as the president of the association. Um, so I'm honored to be doing that for the last um, little bit here. And I have another couple years on my first term of two, and we'll see if I get reelected to the second term uh, in a year or two. So um, I honestly don't know where the time has gone. It's been kind of a blur in these last 25 years. Pretty crazy to think about. Um, my goal for that entire time has remained basically the same. I've done only one thing and one thing, um, hopefully somewhat well, in trying to create exceptional custom mountain experiences for people all over the world. Um, for many years, that was exclusively through my work as a mountain guide in the field and educating people. And while I do still maintain a very full guide schedule, splitting between time in the gunks here for the rock season, uh, Alps in the summer season, and then some New England ice, uh, I've also added on some virtual mentoring and personal coaching through my two memberships, uh, the Ascend membership and Ascend Pro which the pro is for the guides and instructors. Uh, both those things have been really super fun. Uh, coaching so many, like just passionate, involved, invested climbers has been super rewarding uh, and a great adventure for me. As I said, adding skill sets into my tool belt, as it were, um, even leading to me to investing a bunch of money and time recently and becoming a certified trauma-informed coach, which has been kind of a whole nother ball of wax. So that's been really cool. Um, more and more, I just found that my purpose these days is really helping others develop skills, become more independent, and create their own experiences in the mountains. Uh, if I'm any good at this work at all, it's because I've been doing it for a very long time, chipping away consistently and steadily um, for years on end. I did some quick math the other day, and um, while I probably haven't been climbing as long as a couple of you on this call, I have probably logged about 5,000 hours and four... 5,000 days and 40,000 hours uh, in mountains and crags all over the world, which is um, kind of mind boggling. And I'm here, still here to share about it. So that's that's awesome. And I'm uh, looking at those numbers. I might think that I'm probably a slower learner than I once thought I was. <laughs> I didn't get here overnight. And I think that's the perfect parallel um, to start from to help you develop as a climber yourself. So consistently working toward the progression and keeping the long game in mind is really the only way I know how to make uh, real progress that's sustainable and something as, as dangerous and unforgiving as climbing is. So that's what I'm up to. Uh, I didn't personally start rock climbing until college. And this is a shot of me uh, on um, dark shadows in Las Vegas. And you know, I really remember still what those days felt like. I remember how fresh and new everything felt and how much uncertainty there was all the time. Uh, in the early years, I think I was more like kind of wondering how things would go as opposed to really, truly like trying to craft an experience. Um, you know, I remember getting a nasty rope burn following my very first lead ever. I remember being terrified on run out 5.7 on my first trip in Red Rock. Uh, I've been stressed out biting off more than I can chew. I've been scared to death by lightning storms, turned around on mountains I thought I knew very well. Like I, I may not have seen it all, but I've seen a lot. And as I think back on those formative experiences in my early years, I realized that the reason I was able to persevere through several of those challenges was a few very specific things. Um, for one, I was pretty good at giving myself grace um, and was interested in learning from my mistakes and getting back on the horse, trying to consistently make incremental efforts all the time. And while those things matter a lot, the single biggest factor in overcoming the challenges I just mentioned uh, for me was that I sought out and received really great mentorship. And I'm consider myself super fortunate in doing that. I simply couldn't be here today um, without the help of lots and lots of people. Um, some of you probably even on this call today. So thanks for being here. Um, at this point in my career, my biggest commitment is to pay forward that knowledge, um, any wisdom I may have gathered and perspective to others, helping climbers and guides alike um, try to become more confident um, and safely enough take the next steps in their climbing journey. And that's why I started the Ascend membership, which I'm two and a half years later so glad that I that I did. Um, I have a couple of reflections that I want to share um, from other climbers that I've worked with over the last couple of years um, that have been um, pretty impactful for me. One is from Gon, who is an amazing climber uh, based here in the Northeast. And uh, she says, Silas's influence on me certainly extends beyond our guiding days and ascend calls. With all the knowledge and climbing mindset I've learned from him, I feel a lot more confident and comfortable pushing my limits in the field. Um, 
gone. You're amazing. I love you so much. <laughs> and another one from Christian, uh, who's an absolute amazing person, uh, rocketing up through the, the climbing uh, grades and uh, technicalities of all the mountain stuff, whether it's skiing and climbing, said, when I started climbing the gym five years ago, I never would have believed what I'd be capable of today. Under Silas's direction, I've learned skills that I've, have taken me outside confidently, steadily, and comfortably bring me far beyond what I ever thought possible. I mean, if that doesn't light me up, I'm not sure what else possibly could in this line of work. Um, thank you both so much. So I, I've been around the block enough times that I think I, I probably am guessing that some of you on the call um, are an absolute no uh, to anything resembling help or mentorship of any kind. And I get it because I've totally been there myself. So to those of you that are in this boat, I'd only say that on the other side of whatever is stopping you in this way, there's a breakthrough waiting to happen that'll change your climbing career and might just change your life. Um, regardless of whether resistance is all about wanting to do it all on your own or not wanting someone to do uh, to tell you what to do, um, or whether it's not wanting to spend money or it's something about um, learning about things that you don't already know about, th there's something there in that paradigm that's most likely showing up somewhere else in your life. So I personally got into climbing to get away from all the rules of normal life. The freedom to do what I think makes the most sense is one of the most important parts of climbing for me. And if you're of that mindset, I can promise you that with high quality mentorship, even it really isn't about forcing you to conform to any particular way of doing things, but rather giving you the tools to better shape your own path, however you see fit. Great mentorships help you be more you. Um, for some of you, I imagine uh, there there might just be climbing. This is thing that's just for fun. It's a hobby. Um, you don't take it too seriously. You're not too worried about um, all these like mentorship kind of things. And you might believe that you'll never really be good enough to be considered uh, what you might call a real climber. Um, so why bother investing too much time or energy into your own development? Only to be let down when you don't achieve what you think qualifies you as being truly good. Um, to people that might fall into that camp, I'd offer you that as someone who struggled with climbing, quote unquote, hard for many years, I I'll remind you that climbing is more about challenging yourself mentally and physically rather than achieving some arbitrary benchmark that you judge your worth by. Um, with good coaching, every single one of us has the opportunity to develop and grow as a climber, learning to appreciate the process of climbing as opposed to just the destination. That whole like it's the journey, not the destination thing. Um, and there's probably a few people on this call that are here for the freebie, but really have no interest in investing anything financially into your own climbing. And I'll dare to say that for most in this camp, it's probably less about the actual dollar amount that you're worried about and more about how you're choosing to prioritize um, what you spend money on in your life. And that's totally cool. No judgment on it whatsoever. But if you're someone that can afford to buy a rope and a rack, chances are pretty good you can also afford to spend a fraction of your monthly beer or coffee budget on becoming a more uh, proficient, safer, and well-educated climber. Um, this is particularly true if you're new to climbing. Um, that investment early on can really pay dividends in the long run. And the, lastly, if you're someone who's intrigued by what climbing could offer you, but um, you're convinced that it will always be scary, it will always be uh, too stressful, uh, all I can offer you today is that it, it may just be time to try something different. It may be time for you to give climbing a real shot with real support and guidance, uh, high quality mentorship. Uh, and with those things, I promise you'll be blown away by what's possible uh, in, in a, being part of a supportive, um, amazing community. So the question is, what's the future that you want to create for you and your climbing? And I think that regardless of uh, where you're from, what climbing interests you the most, uh, how long you've been doing this, we all kind of want the same thing uh, as climbers. We want to feel capable doing hard things and solving problems. We want to feel confident when challenged. We want to feel strong and able physically and mentally. We want to feel poised and calm in the face of danger. We want to feel like I've got this right? Um, if if any of those things ring true for you, please drop a yes in the comments. It would really uh, confirm a lot of my beliefs around climbing. You know, none of us want to feel stressed out or unsure about whether we're up to the task. We don't want to feel in over our heads or overwhelmed. We don't want to be pushed too far beyond our comfort zone, uh, either by weather conditions, our partners, uh, our own egos. 
We want to feel excited about what's next and not overwhelmed. We want to be what I refer to as a hell yes in taking on these hard, dangerous things. Um, good, a few yeses in there. Thank you all. <laughs> You're so amazing. <laughs> I love people. Um, the, the key for me with all of this is that confidence comes from competence. The more we understand, the better choices we can make. The less uncertainty we have, the closer to our potential we can operate. Seeing more of the big picture is empowering as a climber, allowing us to play into our strengths while intentionally working on our weaknesses. We have, you know, each of us all the time at any given point in our career have something to work on to become a well, more well-rounded climber. So understanding our weaknesses and intentionally working on them is the best way I know to keep developing as a climber. It's also kind of the most fun part as well. So um, the cool thing is that we can view choosing our next mountain adventure in much the same way. So with all that said, and it's been a bunch said already, um, I'd like to share with you what this webinar is truly all about, this training is all about, and that's the year map framework. So are you ready for that? Okay, good. Okay, finally. Yeah, they're like, yeah, they're like, on with it, Rossi. We'll give us, get us to the goods. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right. So, my goal with this whole thing is that I want you to leave this training with feeling more capable of seeing the bigger picture and knowing which questions to ask as you improve your own climbing skills. By the end of this hour or so that we have today, I hope you have a more uh, complete perspective on how to strategize your next adventure and whether you're just starting out sport climbing uh, outside, venturing into trad leading, taking your rock and ice skills into more challenging remote terrain. I hope that this gives you a little bit broader perspective on all the pieces that I see involved with it. Um, the goal is to help you succeed with your training, enjoy yourself more and stay safer as you push yourself harder and um, harder out there in the field. This framework, I hope, will assist you in understanding both the, the broad considerations and the finer details all at once, uh, kind of simultaneously when the day's ahead. So I, I want to simplify the process of your planning your next trip. We all know that a little bit of stress is beneficial. It can kind of keep us keyed in and stoked and excited about what's next, um, while too much stress is just absolutely debilitating, causing us to shut down, um, turn away from, from big things altogether, or just call it good and go on to the next thing. So I want to alleviate a bunch of the fear that goes into taking on too much and being in overwhelm. Uh, ultimately, I want to help overcome self-doubt and ensure the adventure you're choosing is right for you for right now. Uh, and with this clarity, help you move forward more confidently, deliberately executing on your vision about what you want to have happening. Um, Minimizing the uncertainty that it uh, is exists in this whole equation empowers us to make better decisions more confidently and then commit to those decisions with, with deliberate action. Whether that means um, keeping going in the field, turning around, bailing, or going to our backup plan, whatever it is, um, we're just better set up for success. Okay, so the key question for climbers is really, in my opinion, then how do we make consistent progress without taking on too much risk? How do we balance being adventurous on one hand with also being super conservative over the course of a hopefully multi-decade career? And that's where this year map framework comes in. It's designed you and help, helping to create climbing plans. Um, I hope this framework helps you assess whether your climbing aspirations are aligned with your current skills as well. And by working through a couple of layers I'm going to outline here, uh, help you determine if your dreams are, you know, somewhat realistic, a uh, total pipe dream for the moment, um, or whether they may require some specific growth in certain areas uh, to reach that goal in the near or distant future. So with your map, the goal is to find climbs that are appropriate for you, challenging yet uh, challenging climbs yet achievable and enjoyable without going too far too soon. <laughs> and having bad outcomes. Um, in my opinion, that's really the, the, the mature climber mindset is this idea of seeking growth while prioritizing really conservative risk taking. Um, I mean, climbing is dangerous, pushing beyond our abilities can be perilous. And on the other side of things, sticking to the same old routines and habits uh, can often breed complacency, which is arguably as dangerous or, or close. So um, 
drop in the chat if you would the climb that you're most excited about coming up whether it's a month from now um next year 10 years like give me the dream climb that you think would be just absolutely amazing and th this this exercise for me always brings up like kind of a double-edged sword i get super excited but also uh it, it gets pretty daunting pretty fast pangora peak yeah absolutely high exposure nice yes high exposure on the 40th birthday awesome 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 keep them coming mount whitney amazing mike good to see you in here i, I know those little uh hydrophobia yes yes haunting yo amazing chris that would be fantastic north face of the eiger dude gary you and me both buddy assault and traverse silly barber yeah grand traverse fantastic keep them coming i'm gonna keep looking at them all right so let's get into it um my job as a mountain guide really what i've been learning is creating experiences for people based on who they are in the moment and so each day i go out there i'm creating a new experience in the same place with different people all the time so this progression got me to think about the many factors that go into creating these experiences and i think that the layers of progression um, or building blocks i'll show you in a second uh i guess i'm showing you right now uh, are a bit like layers in a cake so we want to provide the first layers down low um, initially and then providing a solid foundation to build up from there. Uh, as we go through these layers, I encourage you to keep, keep thinking about zooming in and out, uh, kind of developing that 30,000 foot view, uh, seeing the big picture and then zooming back in and seeing the finer details. That's a pretty good strategy, no matter uh, what you're thinking about in climbing, whether you're on lead uh, in the moment or uh, planning stuff like this. So the little saying I have goes, team before terrain, terrain before timing, timing before techniques and techniques before tools. These are all you know, really important vital categories to think about um, in the planning process. And that's how I think about them is that team provides the foundation and we're working up there into terrain, timing techniques and tools. So to start with team, this is where it all begins, right? Um, who we go outside with matters. We all know that, making, that having partners go on adventures they don't enjoy uh, can be kind of epic. And having the right partner with the right strengths and weaknesses for the certain outing can be absolutely critical to achieving uh, good success out there. So in short, choosing the right partner for the right specific objective is critical and colors many decisions we make before and during the outing. You know, of course, it's, it's okay to also choose the outing and then choose a partner that you want to take with you on that outing. Um, but in the context of this kind of model, I usually think with like, how do we start with the people? And then which, like given this day or outing we have time for, how do we together move into this terrain? All right. If you're wondering how specifically to do that, um, that's something we'll talk about a little bit later and uh, stick around and then hopefully we'll get some answers from that. So as we move into terrain, the second category here, it's like the old saying, location, location, location. This is probably the single biggest piece of the equation in choosing a peak or a route that you're up against. Where you choose to be in the mountains permeates through every other choice you'll make and is the most important factor in figuring out your likelihood for success, the amount of risk you'll be assuming, and how much you'll be challenged. Where you choose to go in both a macro and a micro sense is absolutely critical. By zooming out and viewing our route in the context of a greater terrain picture, it'll help us develop a better understanding of the many factors at play and digging into the overall scale, seriousness, complexity, and difficulty helps us determine the appropriateness of the route relative to our personal abilities. Um, this research also helps us understand how much time we'll need to commit to planning for, training for, and achieving the objective. So carefully evaluating all aspects of the terrain will also help us understand the objective hazards and how we might avoid or mitigate our exposure to those hazards. By choosing appropriate terrain for our team, we lay a solid foundation from which to build our plan. Good terrain choice allows us to manage risks, challenge ourselves, and set up our team for success. Cool. Moving into timing. So when I realized that the combination of where and when was conditions, I just about fell over. Like maybe this is old, old news to other people here, but timing plus where you are in the terrain creates conditions. And everyone here I'm sure knows that conditions matter. So once you've chosen where to be in the terrain, we wanna think about when we actually wanna be there. 
that will determine um, when we have whether we have good conditions or not. And if you've ever climbed um, a red point pitch in the scorching sun, 100 degree temperatures, you know that timing matters. If you skied a frozen coulard when you thought it would be spring snow, uh, spring corn snow, you know conditions matter. If you've been at an ice cliff that's getting afternoon sun and had icicles falling all around you as it got too warm out, you know that conditions matter. So the combination of where and when to be in certain terrain is like 99% of the equation in figuring out your likelihood of success and how much risk you'll be assuming at any mountain anywhere in the world at any given time. It's kind of it's kind of mind blowing. So if you nail the timing of being in the right place at the right time, things get kind of easy. Like things are going well, travel conditions are good, um, you're comfortable, you're warm, but you blow the timing in of of where to be when. You might have wet slide avalanches. You might have slide for life conditions. You might be sweating too much. You might be post holing, um, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on and on. And so what we really want to think about is exactly that, just the interplay of where to be when as a way to both be more productive and limit our risk when out there in the field. Again, try to zoom in and out on this, this kind of these subjects from a 30,000 foot view um, as in like a seasonality kind of context and make our choices based on starting with a 30,000 foot view and then continually zooming into that meso and even the micro scale um, with this concept. So for me personally, as an example, I've really been shifting when I'm in uh, both alpine terrain in the summer, as well as ice terrain in the winter, just because things are getting kind of weird with global warming, right? So thinking about that big picture um, seasonality aspect can be really helpful. Okay. Techniques. Once you decided where to go, when to be there, and who to be with, techniques really kind of fall into place. And you can start considering what problems will I need to solve as a way to determine which techniques you need to brush up on or learn in the months ahead. This is really kind of what Ascend, uh, the Ascend membership is, is based on primarily, is three subcategories of the skill sets. So movement and fitness, technical systems, and a mindset and stress management kind of categories. Um, that covers most of what we're talking about in this in this bigger category. You can start by identifying the crux of each subcategory. So what will be most physically challenged? What will you need to be climbing at um, grade wise? How fit do you want to be? What technical systems have you uh, thought about needing to use, whether it's glacier travel or uh, avalanche science, those sorts of things. And then also considering uh, what causes you the most stress on this proposed outing can also be really helpful. Once you have a handle on all those things that are mostly knowns, you can really start to consider things like, okay, like what's new about this outing? What do I think is probably unknown that I haven't considered yet about this outing? Uh, those are great places to start as well. And then the last category, um, which in some ways is the least important, um, but also still very necessary still, is just the tools and gears we're choosing to bring with us. Uh, as that final piece of the consideration. So thoughtful planning done in the previous layers really just works a progression through making it pretty obvious about what to bring on the outing based on those previous categories. So if you know who you're gonna go with, where you're gonna go, when you'll be there, and um, the techniques you need to use, the tools fall right into place. Again, like what problems will I need to solve is a great place to start in thinking about those sorts of things. Um, not only think about these things in, in on the route itself, but the approach, the descent, if you have to bail, um, implement a backup plan, that sort of thing. Transportation, navigation, emergency considerations also fall into this bucket and are really good things to think about. Once we understand the theory, and I know I'm going kind of quickly because this is just a short time we have together today. Once you understand the theory behind the year map framework, it's time to start like actually putting it into play. So I've created a list of questions uh, that have go in, that go through all these categories and have some prompts to look at both a 30,000 foot view and a more micro view uh, across the board. So my recommendation is that you first go through the macro kind of 30,000 foot view list of questions for each category. Take a break after that. You have to at least do 100 push-ups or 100 pull-ups, maybe both. A uh, couple hours, go go for a run, whatever, uh, and come back to it hours or days later to do the, to do the micro run-through list. And you'll get a pretty good sense um, once things have kind of settled in your brain and, and done a bunch of research. Um, of what that all might look like to you much more realistically. Um, 
in addition to the five categories we just went over, I've also added a little gut check both before and afterwards. And that's just a way for a lot of us that are really um, kind of based up here a lot to get into our bodies, take a breath and focus on um, what we're feeling and maybe not noticing in the moment. So um, I know it's a brief, brief overview. That's the idea today. My, my goal in making this list of questions and this diagram is to give you enough of a comprehensive look at major considerations while also trying to be concise enough uh, to make it user friendly and not over burdensome. So, you know, obviously you can add on to these questions, anything that makes sense to you personally, and that you think is more important to you. Um, this is just a starting point. It's just a concept and idea that this guy over here in New York came up of out of thin air. And if it doesn't work for you, you can adjust it as you need to. Okay. Um, Okay, so which of the layers in the comments have you most personally focused on in the past? Drop those in the comments first. Uh, you can maybe put a one next to those. So one is which ones you've used most readily in the past. And then with a two, put what you focus on the least that you think you'd most like to look at moving forward. That'd be super helpful for me and everyone else here too. I have a few other questions too, but we're gonna skip right through those. All right, uh, while that's happening, um, just to reiterate kind of the, the basic overview of this, by taking a 30,000 foot view look at um, who you're with, the team before the terrain, terrain before timing, timing before techniques and techniques before tools, um, we can try to get a really well-painted picture and ask some good questions all the time about what we're doing out there in the field well before we, we get out there and are committed. <laughs> How many days do we have to do the 100 push-ups? Exactly. Um, yeah, team, 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 team. Awesome. Fantastic. Keep them going, everyone. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so you can answer these questions in your head if you want, or you can pop them in the chat. Are you happy you stuck around so far? We haven't lost too many people. That's good. Uh, could you see using this framework to guide yourself in your planning in the future? Would you feel more comfortable now sitting down and planning your next climb? Has our time today together been well spent? Even if like maybe there's only one thing. And do you wanna spend more time with me going deeper into the YearMac framework and finding other climbing practices that'll keep you climbing more confidently than ever. <laughs> it's so funny you guys doing this and having like not much feedback. So many yeses, y'all are amazing. <laughs> I'm very appreciative of you being here. Um, fantastic, cool. So from here, you basically have two choices. Um, do you keep doing this on your own or do we do it together? That's really the choice you have ahead of you. So you can leave here um, now or at the end of the webinar and you can keep doing uh, this climbing thing on your own using the fundamentals you've already learned from the year map framework and all your years of experience. It's a totally viable option and one that will likely get you where you want to go. It may take a little bit longer and maybe a little bit more dangerous, maybe a few more bumps in the road, but you're likely to get there be where you want to go. The second option is, would you want to implement this framework into your progression and move forward with my personal full support? And, you know, this path is guaranteed essentially to get you results you want in a shorter amount of time in a more safely way than you've ever done it before alone. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to explore what that option looks like. It's called the Ascend Membership, spoiler alert, um, to share what it's all about. Sound cool? <laughs> Afterwards, I'll take some questions. And if you hang around to the very end, I'm gonna give you a super valuable free gift um, that's rel relative to uh, this year map framework. So stick around if you can. Okay. So for those of you who are wondering how the heck do you become a climber virtually, a better climber virtually, I can promise you it's actually possible. and. Five years ago, I may not have made that statement, but 
since the pandemic, I've really figured out um, how to translate what I know in the field and what I've learned in the field to an online community called the Ascend Membership and make it easy to access all sorts of great information, uh, techniques, climbing, coaching at a price that's much, much lower than my usual day rate. Um, so this is a more affordable, more attainable and more accessible option um, and way for me to give back to the community that I wasn't able to do before this. Um, it's a monthly coaching subscription where you'll join other Ascend members on a live community call each month. Uh, you'll get to share your wins. You'll dive deep into climbing skills, technical systems, mindset training, and just generally be a part of a conversation with others like minded climbers in this climbing world. The year map framework is part of it. Um, in Ascend, we don't often wonder how to pick the right. Blah, 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 blah. Let me start over with that. The year map system is the foundation for all of this. In this end, you don't need to wonder how to go pick the right partner or which route is right for you next, or when to go on your dream climbing trip for the best climbing conditions. You bring your questions, you get answers, you get coaching, and I'm there to support you all the time. Maybe you've got questions about developing certain skill sets or about which gear to buy. I promise I've got you covered. In addition to the monthly live calls, we have a vibrant Facebook group. Uh, if you're looking for a partner, look no further. People have been joining up and having amazing climbing days there for the last two and a half years. You also get access to all the call archives over the last yeah two and a half years or so. Uh, all the all the content is searchable. Uh, everything we've covered in Ascend over the last, like I said, two and a half years is there. There's also a bunch of instructional content that's shot um, right here in the gunks with some higher end camera gear and better production quality and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's a pretty great resource that all lives in this portal, either on your computer or on your phone, anywhere you have internet. So the Ascend membership is really a membership for all climbers, regardless of how experienced you are, how hard you climb. If you're looking for an amazing supportive group of like-minded climbers who are conscientious and want to improve, then I would consider Ascend being the right fit for you. It's a, it's a place that you can come to gain confidence, address weaknesses, uh, and take your climber to the next level almost immediately. I won't say overnight, sometimes overnight, but not usually overnight. Although sleeping well is very, very important for climbing and getting better. <laughs> okay, so normally, you know, in the climbing world, getting this sort of training and mentorship requires at least a day rate of several hundred dollars. Um, and if not a course of multi-day training costing thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, Ascend is not $4,000, it's not $400, it's not even $40, it's $27 a month. And it does require you come and show up with a willingness to learn and grow. Um, if you commit to a full year of climbing growth in Ascend, you get almost two months free, bring the price down to 277 for the total year. Um, if you click the button below the video in the webinar room, where is that exactly? I bet Cheryl can tell us where that is. Um, you can click the link. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description. You can also just type in uh, bit.ly slash number two ascend. So bit.ly slash two right there, ascend. Um, and since you're here today, I have a couple bonuses for you as well. Anyone that joins today gets a special small group coaching session with me um, where we'll talk about anything you want to and answer any questions you have um, bring bring the session. So just the group that signs up today gets a small coaching session with me um, that's catered to doing exactly what you want to do. If you sign up today for an annual membership, not just a monthly, but an annual membership, you will get almost those two months free compared to the monthly. You'll also get a Google sheet of this system, the Yearmap framework, with two trip um, examples on there that I filled out personally. One is for Enduro Man and the Gunks, which is a fantastic um, 511C route that uh, I've been on one time, but I put on my list for the spring to get back on and lead. Um, and then, but that was like 10 years ago, so I'm hopeful I can do that. So I went through that just for, for my own good, but as an example for you. And the other example I filled out might be interesting to some other folks, which is the Hornley Ridge on the Matterhorn. Um, which is a pretty amazing route. And um, so those are the bonuses. The other thing it's important to know is that if you're interested in Ascend either monthly or yearly, this is the last time this will be, the price will be this low. So 
we're going to raise prices at the end of the week. I believe it's Friday. Um, Ascend will never be this low again. So if you are considering doing it, you can get in today at the and this week at a low rate um, that you've seen above. And if you wait a little bit longer, you might pay just a little bit more. So the, with any investment of any size, small or big, there's always a risk. You'll love it. You won't love it the way you'd hoped. That's totally fine. Cancel it at any point. Um, I would just add there's also a risk in not joining and not putting yourself first in this whole climbing thing. Um, you've come this far. Why not consider it? So that also is the cost of not doing something. All right. So in the theme of me not knowing what's going on in your heads and uh, not being able to talk to you directly, I do have a couple of things I want to go through that you might be thinking. You might be thinking, well, I'd rather spend gear, I'd rather spend money on gear. I totally get it. I can say from personal experience that the fancy new cam will not help you become the confident climber that the Ascend membership will. I promise you. If you'd rather remain the lone wolf and figure everything out yourself, I get it. As a recovering lone wolf myself, I totally see you and I understand. There's some benefit to going it alone and figuring it out yourself. Absolutely. That said, most climbing requires partnership. And I promise you that every win you have will mean more when you share it with your partner, community, and mentors. You don't have to do this alone just to do it your way. I also want to make this super clear. The penalty for waiting to sign up is that your membership is, is of... Good Lord. It's a lot of talking for me. I also want to make this super clear. The downside of waiting to sign up is that the membership is going to go up April 20th and will never again be as low as it is right now. Yes, you heard it here first, folks. $27 a month or $277 per year. You too can be a member. <laughs> All right. Who wants to be on the private Zoom call with me and who's already signed up? Let's uh, pop in the chats and we're going to answer some questions here in just one second. Robin sold. Excellent. Brooks. Oh, so good. So many familiar faces and so many good, good people. <laughs> Thank you all. Patrick, you're on there. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> all right. Um, let's go to some questions. And I think these are still just typed in the chat and I'm going to answer them. Do, do, do. All right, we're, the timing is working out. It's almost like we planned this. All right, let's see here. All right, I wanna get, make sure I get all the questions here. Does your Ascend membership take into consideration working through PTSD while climbing? Childhood falling farming accident was fine until climbing post was climbing. Oop, climbing post a cycle like we can crash open issue. Um, well, it's a great question. PTSD is a pretty serious deal. Um, I'm, I'm not a licensed therapist, so I don't know that I'm qualified to really talk about PTSD specifically. Um, my qualifications stop at what we call a trauma-informed coach. And so I'm I'm happy to, to speak with folks in that way um, regarding any kind of stress or anxiety or, or challenges that come up for them. Um, I don't have specific training in PSD, uh, PTSD specifically. I have taken some tests on PTSD myself. Um, and I think that there's oftentimes the chance of us having PTSD from lots of things, whether climbing related or, or um, otherwise. Um, but to answer your questions, working through PCSD specifically um, from a therapy perspective, no. Um, I think that we can probably help you find ways of getting into climbing that aren't as stressful for you and, and keep triggering that PTSD. Um, but working through and like actually uh, healing from the PTSD, I would say no. All right, what else do we have? Is there, are there any virtual one-on-one -on -one options from Dave? One-on-one -on -one coaching is something I've offered a little bit. Um, I haven't honestly advertised it very much because I haven't had a lot of time. <laughs> it's something I keep on thinking about. Uh, it 
the one-on-one part is not part of the Ascend membership specifically, um, but it is something we could talk about specifically if people are interested in doing that uh, in a private setting. It wouldn't be the $27 a month, most likely. All right, what else do we have? Cheryl, are you popping up these questions or am I going through the chat? It's just a gut check. How to communicate. Yes. Can you discuss the gut check and how to communicate those feelings to your team members? Yeah. Great question. Um, yeah. Communication with our partners, whether in the field or at home, is a challenging thing. I would say all of us have work to do on figuring out how we feel about stuff. And that's our responsibility is to try to um, really understand what that feeling is and where it's coming from. And then the logistical part of it is being able to communicate that well to a partner that in a way they can hear, right? So timing is very important in that. And um, one tip that I'll give you is, is try to make it about you and your feelings and not about what they're doing or what they're thinking or, or, or um, what they're not doing. So, you know, this is a good example of like climbers nearby me that are not in my party that are doing something that I consider sketchy, um, how do I address that? Do I address that, right? And so for me, it's often like, hey, what, what you're doing right now makes me really nervous is one example. Um, so I feel really nervous when you do this thing, right? Um, so to answer the question, timing is important and making it about you and how you feel is a good place to start. All right. Would you talk about terrain and athletic challenge versus fear challenge and partners who just really want to leave but don't seem to have soft skills to manage it? Terrain and athletic challenge versus fear challenge and partners who desperately want to leave but don't seem to have the soft skills to manage it. Um, I think what you're asking, Dave, is something along the lines of um, where the fear is coming from and whether it's like grounded in physical uh, risk or if it's emotional risk. And the, I think the, the my answer is the bottom line is that if you're fearful or emotional, it doesn't matter where it came from. Right. So the trick with, po with people that are, uh, become emotional, whether it's scared, angry, uh, fearful, whatever is to try to not let them go there, right? Like ease into this thing, um, find ways to incrementally engage and, and ratchet up just ever so slightly um, what you're offering in a way that doesn't get them scared. So it's totally possible. And that's, I mean, honestly, that's what I, my work as a guide is a lot day in, day out. Um, but that's where I would start with that. I'm gonna keep moving through a few more questions here. Um, awesome. Trying to move on from the lone wolf mentality. Nice, Morgan. Awesome. Definitely interested. Currently multitasking at work. Oop, I lost the... Uh-oh, what happened? It went away. Oh, no. Uh, here it is. Currently multitasking at work. I need to finish today's work day and then I can sign up. Where and how would I sign up? All you have to do is click on that link or type it in any kind of search bar and it should pop right up. bit.ly slash number two ascend. We'd love to have you, Morgan. Gary, on the sign up, it also mentions all send features at deep discounts. Is there more features that are sold or add-ons? Nope, not right now. What you see is what you get right now. Um, there's two and a half years worth of content in there from a monthly call. There's sometimes more than one month every call, uh, one call every month. And there's uh, a bunch of instructional content. There's some videos. Uh, there's also podcasts and the Facebook community, as well as just generally kind of having a conversation about what we want to cover in the future is often part of that um, journey as well. So, um, yeah. How can we start training your mind to trust your body after injuring certain parts? Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes the mind's got to catch up with the body. Um, the, the first is making sure your body is, is actually really physically um, back, I think. And then the only answer I have is just incremental, gradual, slow and steady progress. Um, like if you've read The Rise of Superman, anybody here, it talks a lot about uh, the 3% rule, which is supposedly like the amount you want to increase things all the time in order to make sustainable growth. I don't know how you calculate exactly 3% all the time, but that's the idea. Just a little bit more all the time and being patient. Like we as people just are not honestly patient as humans and a lot a little bit of patience goes a long way in giving ourselves some um 
some grace. Mike, yeah, Mike, fantastic. Thank you, congratulations. How does talking about climbing translate to building physical skill sets? Well, that's a good question. A lot of these, a lot of the um, Ascend calls are not just talking. It's some of me doing some skills as well, uh, right behind me here sometimes, or using some videos or examples. Um, but to me, the why comes first. So a big part of this conversation we're always having in Ascend is exactly why we're choosing to do certain things and why certain things don't make sense. So it, it's less important to me that I show you a very specific way of doing something technically. And it's more important that I teach you the why of, of why I think doing a certain thing in this context makes a lot of sense and is, is beneficial, right? It's like, this is the antithesis of like, a 15 second tech tip on Instagram. Like you just, you see the skill, you can go use the skill wherever you want and you don't really understand why or where or um, the Achilles heel of this particular skill. So the the technical part is, is a part of it, but any of us can be technicians. I'd rather have you be savvy and understand how to create that and where to create that and why um, which is the foundation for all those things. So uh, when are the monthly calls? They vary a little bit. I'm a full-time working guide. Uh, I do take into account um, people's schedules, but sometimes there'll be five weeks in between calls. Sometimes there'll be three. Um, it just varies. Do, 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 do. Some of the times I've previously bailed have come from lack of root info, excessive optimism on conditions or other uncertainty. How can the framework help to fully prepare for similar uncertainty. That's that's the goal of the whole framework. It's it's basically a list of questions and prompts that key you into certain aspects of what I'm looking for personally in evaluating where to be and when with who. So I think that Gavin, this is exactly what the framework is designed to do. It's just have, it's not a checklist, but at least a framework to give you some ideas of what to think about when planning outings. Un uncertainty is inevitable, but this is the goal, to limit the uncertainty and to be thinking about more of the variables at play. Um, what else do we have? Do, 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 do. There must be more questions. If we are currently a SEM members and want to benefit from the annual rate, what is the admin we do? Uh, this is the same rate that you're in on there right now, David. So you haven't got to do anything at all. You can, maybe you're a monthly member right now. If that's the case, I think that what you would do is cancel the monthly membership and just rejoin the yearly. It should be that simple. Uh, yeah, if you shoot uh, an email, we'll get it all squared away. No problem at all. Hmm, is that all the questions we have? Looking pretty good here, team. All right. Last 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 call, last chance for questions. All right. So if that's all the questions, um, again, thank you all for being here. We're we're geez, we're doing pretty darn good on time. It's it's almost like we planned this. Um let's let's just talk briefly about the whole thing we've done today, okay? Um, so we've gone through the year map framework. Oh, amazing, Gary. So, so it's like to have you on. Thank you. We've gone through the year map framework where we distinguished the hierarchy of how to think about planning our next objective as climbers. So we went through from team into terrain, timing, techniques, and tools. Team before timing, terrain, uh, terrain before, oh, good Lord. <laughs> I've been talking a lot. Team before terrain, terrain before timing, timing before techniques, and techniques before tools. You've got an opportunity to be mentored by some dude who happens to be the president of the AMGA over here in America. Uh, I'm also trained to listen for what's stopping you, not just um, what's on the surface of what you're saying. And I'm really hopeful um, that you'll take away from this um, what you came for. And so this is your last chance, your last invitation for now um, from me personally to join the SM membership. I'm so psyched to have you all here. Um, I really appreciate you all um, wading through this all with me. This is uh, not something I do every day, clearly. And um, I think we're gonna 
get pretty close to wrapping things up here. So look, I I really in in a in a room full of risk takers, hopefully a reasonable risk takers, I love it when folks are willing to take a slight risk in the name of getting what they want for themselves. Uh, and if the SM membership is in alignment with you to sign up um, and support yourself in the journey ahead, I again just recommend considering it. Sign up today, get a free call. Uh, if you sign up for the annual, you get almost two months free and this Google cheat sheet um, with the system and you will get your very own trip examples. So I'm gonna now share with you um, this freebie I've been promising and I think we'll close it down. So I don't know where that is though. Cheryl, how do we do that? Cheryl is my wife and she's the most amazing person I know. She's been very supportive. So Cheryl, you got to help me out with this one. Where do people get the free thing? You probably told me three times. Can you pop off mute? I told you three times. It's all good. They're seeing it on their end. You don't even need to. Oh, you already it. are seeing it. I That's fantastic. <laughs> amazing. 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 It's right under the video. Fantastic. Look at that. Well, team, it's 6.56. We have been exactly uh, 56 minutes in. I'm happy to answer any of the questions that people have out there. Um, and once again, I'm truly honored and grateful to have you all here. I hope that whatever comes next for you, whether it's CSN membership or not, that you do it as safely as possible while still taking some good, uh, fun risk out there that's engaging and uh, not too dangerous. <laughs> no more questions. Last chance. Going once, going twice. Thank you all. Have a wonderful evening, wherever you are in the world.